Okay, so in this video, what I'm gonna do is take my rocks and make a cave structure uh, about low to mid level of tank going all the way across. And what that does is it creates a lot of territory. So if you have a lot of like Mumbuna fish or more aggressive fish, it'll give them more territories to pick and defend rather than having one uh, pile of rocks in the middle where a male's gonna sit around the whole center of the tank and use up all that volume. Uh, with this setup, you're going to have um, more areas towards the ends of the tank, which might separate your males. So um, before I even begin, what I like to do is I'd like to look at my rocks and determine uh, which rocks would be um, the top of a cave and which one would be a base. So in this case, you can see these are pretty flat. So these are going to be top of cave rocks. And then if you look at... Uh, some of my other rocks, they're, they're a little more bulky. They're gonna be more at the bottoms. So you always wanna start with your biggest rocks on the bottom end of your base. So I already have a couple rocks in here. Uh, this is a really nice base rock. So what I like to do is I like to lay out my base rocks first and then kind of build from there. Sometimes you gotta make adjustments moving the base rocks over, but at least you have a starting point. So the other thing I did is, I always try to locate a showpiece rock. And what I mean by that is something that's unique, it's definitely gonna be bigger. In this case, this has kind of like a horseshoe bend to it. It's gonna look really nice in the tank. So I already laid out my two rocks, knowing that I was gonna put this in the middle as my showpiece. So you can see how cool that looks. That's going to look awesome when all the other rocks are around it. Now I can build off of that. So I got again flat, flat rock here, and just kind of move it around to see which which way it works. Um, so let me break that down. In this way, I tried the fatter end over here, and I didn't like how it was thinning out the cave, so I'm putting the thicker end here. And then there's a curve to the rock. Do I want to put that in the front and kind of have the rock pushing out, or do I want to have it concave? So those are things you just need to consider, consider and it's all aesthetics. In this case, I really like how it kind of bows out. A couple more flatter rocks. Sometimes I'll put them in there just to, as a placeholder, then I'll move my rocks around until I get what I want. Okay, so in this case, I have my first level of caves complete. Now, how do I build up? I'm going to put rocks on top of my my tops of my cave so it sits nicely so there's a base and that's this is where you want to start going with a little bit smaller rocks okay so i put the rest of the rocks in the way i like them there's that centerpiece rock it's going to look awesome when fish are underneath it and then you can see this outcropping of rocks here it's actually hard to see what that actually goes through and then um, over here you kind of got this cool double layer uh, cave and in between you got all these crevices that smaller fish can go. So these rocks are great for African cichlids because they're, they're a little smaller and they can squeeze into the caves. If you're gonna do um, South Americans, you probably wanna go with a different type of rock, maybe a slate and a river stone. Uh, just because, first of all, these are really abrasive rocks. So if a South American or Central American, which is usually bigger, brushes up against it, it could have uh, some scale, you know, could hurt its scales or something. So um, these are great for Africans. Also, like I mentioned before, they kind of raise the pH ever so slightly. So anyways, I hope you enjoy it. And uh, I'm gonna have a whole series of different types of um, aquascaping. Some are gonna be plants. I'm gonna do a bamboo one. 
And then I got some uh, whimsical ones with like uh, castles and dragons, stuff like that. So stay tuned.